My name is Lakshmi Ajay. I'm an associate editor with Stack Media. And today I'm in conversation with Saneli Simons, who is the founder and CEO of Mall for Women. Welcome to this conversation, Saneli. Hi, Lakshmi. Thank you for having me. I wanted to start off the journey you've had, which, you know, led you towards e-commerce. You started with beauty and now you're with e-commerce. So how did this switch happen? So my story is quite interesting. I, I've been in the beauty industry for about 18 years. And in 2017, I entered a beauty pageant, a Messi South Africa. And I had a very exciting campaign. I think I did very well in the pageant. But unfortunately, I didn't make it to the finals. The whole experience actually motivated me. But I also had to look into what, you know, why didn't I make it through? And I realized that all the women that went to the finals were entrepreneurs, businesswomen. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. Maybe I should become that too, you know? And I wanted to enter. I haven't entered again, but it did build uh, my entrepreneurial spirit and uh, just being inspired, being around, surrounded by so many powerful women that were role models that really inspired me. So after the pageant, I started an organization called Beauty with Intention because of my background in the beauty industry and having to realize that most women were struggling with inner issues. You know, we all want to look beautiful and pretty on the outside. But deep down, we've got issues that, that we face with, that we're scared to talk about. And I just wanted to create this environment where women can exchange with each other. We'll have, we had conferences and dialogues of gender-based violence, which is a problem here in South Africa, and mental health issues, even just entrepreneurship, how to make extra income. Because in this world that we live in, having just one income stream sometimes could not be enough. So it was very successful. We partnered up with the Johannesburg Chamber of Commerce and Industry and started also hosting events there. And everything was going well. Uh, unfortunately, in 2020, COVID happened. You know, lockdown happened. We couldn't host events anymore. And I had to pivot. Through the Johannesburg Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I attended an e-commerce workshop and which I enjoyed very much at building up the shop and seeing it coming to fruition but I didn't know what to call it you know, my background yes is in the beauty industry but I just didn't want to sell beauty products it's very complicated selling beauty products online especially if people haven't tried it before we have to feel how it feels on your skin you have to try it on and see the result but just buying it online is not that simple so with what I have experienced with beauty with intention doing something that is meaningful to other women it just happened that I realized the vision that I had in 2013 which was more for women and where women will come and trade with the other if they come with kids you can drop off the kid safe place and go to a lawyer's appointment or doctor's appointment or where women will trade with each other if they wanted to buy something they know that i'm going to this place i definitely know where my money is going i'm supporting single women and just where we could build the ecosystem but obviously they would take a lot of funds to build the platform like that to build them all for example i had this e-commerce training it just hit on me that, you know what, this is where the world is moving. I don't have to build a brick and mortar shop. I can actually take this online. So Mall for Women was launched on the 9th of August, which is South Africa's National Women's Day. And we've been there ever since. So you launched in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Wow. So as per recent reports, Africa is forecast to surpass half a billion e-commerce users by 2025, which has also shown a steady 17% growth rate for online consumers for the market. Now we know that the continent has all the right ingredients, population, demographics, and entrepreneurial spirit. And finally, now the big names in e-commerce, Amazon, Jumia, are also here. Yet why did it take so long for Africa to reach the e-commerce goal? What do you think some of the reasons why the secret sauce, what is the secret sauce of e-commerce that you have not yet got? I'll start in saying one of the reasons why I think that we are successful now and we're getting it right is because of the internet. Even now it's still a challenge, but before it was even worse. Smartphones, people didn't have phones. Now cell phones, smartphones are what is contributing to a lot of e-commerce sales. So at that time we didn't have smartphones, we didn't have a technology. But I'll really put it into COVID. When COVID-19 happened, when the pandemic happened, it really accelerated the e-commerce sales. People couldn't buy, they couldn't go to shops. So they had to buy things and they had to buy online. So then that's when they realized, oh, okay, you know what? I can actually trust buying online because before people would also talk about negative things. I bought online and I never received my password. I can remember when I started the business and when I used to hear that spoken about on radio, I'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> is this ever going to work? But people started trusting. 
And the more you order and you have successful stories and getting good reviews and putting it on your website, it started changing how people think and, you know, it opened up. So I'll definitely say it's because of accessibility to the internet and the smartphone. I will also add in actually and say that a lot of also Africa is based on most of the people are young. So it's people that can afford to be able to use technology because people, young people are able to be online and use technology. So that's why it's growing and booming right now. Compared to other regions like Europe, North America, Southeast Asia and India, what do you think separates or what characteristics define the e-commerce logistics sector developing and growing in Africa? Characteristics, I would say in the traditional logistics, you used to know the new customer. It, they will buy in bulk because they are for companies and or for a store. So you would order, you back, you know who you're ordering from. And in e-commerce, it's a bit different because it's individuals. It's people that you don't know. And I don't really want to say not loyal, but because it's one of the benefits that comes with e-commerce is because you can make a choice. You can choose who you're going to buy from. It's a bit of a, a, a different dynamic when you look at it. But also looking at it in a whole is that e-commerce does have power to build up the economy, fight poverty. And I think it's something that really us as Africans must trust and be willing to, to do. And then we'll go with a lot of education. Once we educate people to know that e-commerce is good for both sellers and buyers. Sellers, for example, we can sell cross-border. We don't have to be limited to this small shop that we have, your little tiny shop. Buyers can also shop anywhere they want. You can compare your prices. You can do it anytime when it's convenient for you. So it's definitely a win-win situation for everyone. But I think because of maybe knowledge of how everything goes, how does it actually work, sometimes does make people a bit scared when it comes to e-commerce. What would you say are some of the challenges or bottleneck that could stunt the growth of e-commerce logistics in African nations? Also, if you could talk about the last mile logistics, do you think it delivers in Africa? Challenges? Cyber security. Cyber security is definitely a challenge, but hopefully with the African Free Trade Agreement that's coming up, that is set up to where all the countries can develop policies, where it's everything is clear, systems of how they should go, and that will help us a lot. Also, even coming up with payment solutions that can work for all Africans, they will be amazing. Consumer trends and I would say mobile, different channels that are available in terms of marketplaces. For example, if a person has three, you have a product and you are selling it in three different marketplaces, you have 156% chance of your products being sold, where else if you are only putting it in one place. A person comes and sees your product in one place, okay, maybe they've never seen your product before, but when you go and see it in multiple channels, then you start also developing and feeling confident. Oh, okay, this product, I've seen it somewhere, you know, it gives a person a, a bit of more comfortable, uh, confident, but also you as a seller, if you are taking part your product into different marketplaces, only a certain audience will only see your product in one place, but if you put it into multiple channels, you, your product is seen by a bigger audience. So that's definitely the new trend is going to go up, and I hope it does the average. As an e-commerce player, what would be your one ask towards the aviation sector? Now that you know air cargo industry is taking a lot of interest in the African landscape, what would be your one big ask? That uh, collaboration is really key because we have this platform, which is to empower women entrepreneurs to list their products here. We have this platform, wherever you're needing anything for a woman, you can come to this platform. We've created the platform, but at the same time, there are some barriers to entry. When a person is uh, making a purchase in our platform, it's one lipstick. If you might imagine now you've got, you want to buy lipstick, you want to buy an eyeshadow, you want to buy a mascara but all these products are from different suppliers now. And then how do you then come together into making sure that this product, when a person makes it, it's swift, everything is swift and it's easy and it's able to be accessible by the customer wherever they are. The logistics uh, sector does play a role in terms of us being the sellers and then them also, how do, because also even them is not nice when they having 12,000 <laughs> packages, small packages that they have to deal with you know, that they have to deliver. So if you can just find a way to integrate the certain solutions where you can have conversations, I've really enjoyed today's session because even with, I've met a few interested parties, then we can come up with systems. 
that is going to make it easier for us also as sellers and for them that are working in the logistics sector mm -hmm. to make it easy that the, the e-commerce is complementing the process is not coming with problems that now oh my goodness we have to <laughs> deliver 100 lipsticks a day are there things that can be done by the government or any good practices that can be taken up by the investor community aviation players transportation industry to further fuel this growth of e-commerce government i would say that legislation or just even the legal framework because each and every country has its own regulations so it's also based on that country, customs. If we can just unite, we are all human beings. We can all do the same thing and work together in such a terms of when we are creating laws, laws that benefit a country, it doesn't matter where you are. You know, the same laws that are benefiting us as South Africans should be the same laws that are benefiting India, should be the same laws that are benefiting the US. Why can we not come up with systems and policies that will work for everybody and save every community. That's what I think governments need to do. Like I've mentioned earlier that the African Trade Free Agreement, they're trying to bring up those policies. Some countries are a bit difficult and you ask yourself, why? Why would you be fighting something that's going to help your community? Because this is also not only talking about export opportunities of export for South African products to go around the world. It's also about impulse opportunities. We need fabrics. We might not produce fabrics, but we could have very good designers so we import from India to bring the product to South Africa. Easy, are very transparent, with no difficulties. We get the product, the women start sewing and they start designing, and then we take the ship to America. Same thing also America, do, because we also have a choice. We can choose what kind of style we want. Do you want African print, or do you want modern glitter, or do you, you know, want satin or silk? Why can we not have those choices? So even on, in an intra-Africa level, you want that there not be many trade barriers and there is some kind of uh, legislation that paves the way for that. Absolutely, because yeah. it can be shipping to your neighboring country be so complicated as if... Obviously, some other products, I do understand that they can be, obviously, they do need to be legislations in place. But like for fabric, never harmed anybody. It only makes it look pretty. <laughs> I believe that the recent successes enjoyed by e-commerce in Africa are closely linked to women, the users and entrepreneurs. Could you tell me how women's participation in e-commerce has aided its growth and how online platforms can benefit women business owners? What better way to serve a woman when you are a woman yourself? I feel that women do understand women. We think alike. We do really connect very well and want the same thing in life. So in terms of when you're looking at it into business, I would know what will make a woman feel comfortable and confident in her skin. That is for me as a seller, but also even as entrepreneurs, creating that space of knowing that research has been done, numbers have been proven, that if you empower a woman, you're actually empowering a community. Actually, our president says, if you empower a woman, you're empowering a nation. So that is really says a lot in terms of if women are participating in the economy, we will see greater upliftment of for society as a whole. Also, again, women, we've got a lot of things that we have to deal with. But even taking the glass ceiling, we cannot break it because we're going to go on maternity leave. And that's and it's going to happen. You know, you're going to get married and have kids. So, but it cannot be a barrier that you cannot succeed. So e-commerce has given us women a platform where we can be entrepreneurs, be our own bosses and create our own product. But unfortunately, it is a bit challenging to open your own e-commerce shop because you have to market. There's so many things that are involved into getting sure that your SEO is correct and the products are synced by the right market. That's why we've created more for women where, yes, you are running your own e-commerce shop in a mall, just like the, you know, the e-mall, the malls that uh, we see around, but you can run your own business in that and we can assist you. It's not only just listing your product to your business support organization that we work with. We also give access to funding so that if you are able to get your product exported somewhere, you're able to produce the products that are needed because at the end of the day, if you're only making 10 products, it's really not just you're still cooking in your kitchen. We need to be looking at scale, how we're going to scale. And I do really believe that trade has the ability to fight poverty. How many women sellers or women traders are working with you uh, when it comes to mall for women? At the moment, we, the numbers are low. Business model, unfortunately, when we started, we were looking at listing at least 100 women per month. And then it came to logistics because the Shopify platform that we're using we can only list a certain number of pickup locations. 
But through our partnership with DHL, we've come up with a way where women can go and drop off at the nearest DHL uh, warehouse and then it can be picked up there and DHL can go and drop it off. I think that's a very good. I'm very happy with that move because it really has kept us limited because we can't sign up. We don't have to be limited to South Africa only. Our platform is online. Everywhere women can list and put their products online. But because of the logistics, it has been a bit challenging, but I'm really grateful that they've come back with a solution now that we can integrate third party through also another challenge that we faced was how then do we make sure that the people that list do really have those products. So again, the chamber came in and we're actually looking into working with the International Chamber of Commerce because there's chambers of commerce everywhere, all the countries. So once you list with the chamber or you are part of the chamber, then you will have access to the mall and then you can list your products there. And we already know that you are legitimate. You've got a, a body that is that you're reporting to because it can be very dangerous, especially, you know, when people list that I've got jewelry. <laughs> Even if you ask them to send you some jewelry, they can send you three samples, but doesn't mean they've got a hundred. So we do need to have checks in, in place. Thank you for this conversation, Senator. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs>